Welcome to Salika Build episode four. Sorry, there's not been any content in the past week. I have been on holiday and I got back yesterday. So straight back onto working on the car and there's plenty more things for us to crack on with. So I've already made a start. This guy, Mr. Ariel, it comes up to about here and it should be probably double the height. Uh, and for some reason, Japanese engineers thought it was a good idea to bury it behind this and I've got to take all this stuff off. So um, I'm going to take off these parts, take the, the rear strut, I don't even know what this is called. I think it's a rear chassis brace, something like that. Anyway, I'm going to take that off, hopefully pull the interior parts out, but I have found something which I'm not overly fond of, but I'll show you now. So you can see, it looks like whenever the person's installed this aftermarket head unit in there, they've had a, bit, a subwoofer or something in the back and just left the cable. So. Uh, I've routed this through to the front, I've had a look, and it's not connected to anything, but I'd rather it not been here, so I might take that out whilst I'm here. Alright, cue the music! <laughs> This guy's out. Probably gonna be changing that bulb as well. I think it's a halogen one at the moment I could put an LED in, but that is very, very, very low priority at the moment. It looks like there's just one bolt holding this thing in. And I've got to take the aerial out from the top as well. And there's why the, just loads of like little bits and pieces everywhere. Like why is a an RJ45 Ethernet connector up here? Bits of plastic. Oh, this is just making me more and more concerned. Could definitely do with the Hoover in here, I've got to say. So what I can do now is take off this little piece on here. And um, what I'm gonna do is get some pliers and a rag just so I don't scratch anything. And I can pop them on those two, I don't even know what you would call them, slots. And I can twist it round and, and take the top off. So now I can unscrew it from the housing. should be able to just pull this thing out there we go cool pop that in a little tub and then it's just this one here just shake it you can see that the whole thing seems to rotate around this point so i think there's only one um i'll just quickly take off this connector first whilst it's mounted in there we go and then i'll take this guy off shut the boot now i've got that out I've just popped a rag in there as well so there's just a hole if it starts raining like it looks like it's going to then don't get any water in there um i've taken this side off as well uh just checking to see if there's any strange modifications that have been done which doesn't look like there is but i have a feeling i'm gonna have to take this side of the the car off um or i might just check to see if they're wired into the center console if they're not then i should be able to just pull them through hopefully because i Seems like a lot of effort to take all that off. I got this on holiday as well. Got one to match for the Shrocker as well. I'll show you that in a minute. And as soon as we said it was going to rain, probably can't see it, but it has started raining. So this is the guy in question. Uh, take him inside and see if we can take it apart. So I've managed to get this all the way out apart from this one link just by yanking on it and um, I think the inside the outside of these parts look okay but the inside of, of in here essentially I think it's just full of gunk so I'm just going to run a little bit of really fine grit sandpaper over the edges um, and just get you know, there's little bits of corrosion on there hopefully get it working as far as I can I, I'm struggling to get this link out so it might need a bit more soaking in WD-40 
right, Dad's going to do the honours and turn on, <laughs> turn on the car. Get ready. You ready? Ready. Oh my God. That's much better. So it's still got this one that doesn't go up, but can't, can't, can't really get it out. So we'll just have to make do with that at the moment. If you remember from a previous video, I bought some fabric to go on the inside of the door cards. And what I'm going to do now is take off the door cards. I've managed to get one off. Found some. I think they've they've changed. Obviously, changed the speakers in this, and it's just like they've done a very tatty job. The, all the screws and stuff for the doors are different. Like every screw is basically different. Um, I'll show you now. So usually these are reasonably similar, um, but every one is completely different. So I think they've either lost, lost the screws or just chucked any old screw back in, in its place. And you can see they've, they've patched stuff up with duct tape and yeah, just looks a bit crap. Um, but you can see the speakers there, they're definitely not stock, um, but they sound all right, but not as good as I'd want them to be. Sound system is not a priority at the moment and I'm happy with how it is. It's not the best, but it does the job. So I'm just going to take this one off now. Uh, there's a couple of different screws. There's a little, I think this guy, there we go. There's one behind there, uh, a couple behind um, the uh, door lever, etc. So I'll undo them now and take the card off. Right, both door cards are off. And this is the fabric that was originally on it. You can see it's a bit stained and it's actually coming off as well. Um, I don't know if I can get behind there or not, um, but it's got this little wooden, I think it's just like insulation or something. So I'll see if I can take these off and then hopefully I can take the door apart and get these individual pieces off and then I can re-glue it. If not, then I'll have to like mask everything up, uh, which isn't too much of a pain. Okay, so we're just cutting the fabric now to put onto the uh, door cards and here's the one that we've taken off. I'll just spin it around and show you. So you can see that, you know, it's got some marks on it. It's not in the best of shape, it's pretty ugly. Probably, yeah, it still smells. <laughs> um, and this is like a Alcantara suede fabric. Um, so what I've done is I've cut a big square out and I'm gonna mask off the door, spray some adhesive on and put this on and then we can cut around the edges. So I've given it a try on one of the doors and it looks pretty good, I've got to say. Um, so you can see, you know, I've put a little slot there so we can get right into the corners. Um, but this, I've essentially just pushed around the edges and used a mask just to keep the adhesive off the places where we don't want the glue on. Um, and then hoping we can just go around with the blade and take off any of the extra edges, but we'll see how that goes. So this is door card number two. What I've done is I've just quickly sanded the surface just to give us a bit more of a stronger bond. And I've cleaned it with some interior cleaner just to get any bits and bobs off and, and keep the surface clean. And I've just gone around the edges with some tape. And this should, like I said, just keep the uh, glue off of the edges. And I'll just go around now and I've got this spray adhesive. Uh, it was like, I'm trying to think how much it was, maybe like five, 10 quid off of Amazon. Pretty cheap. The fabric was a, a tenner as well. So if this doesn't work, we can try something else. It's just a quick, cheap way of changing the fabric. So I've just put a few coats of the spray adhesive on and I'll stick the fabric down now. Uh, and I've done a bit of Googling and a bit of YouTube in and found that you need to stick the fabric down from the middle and smooth out to the edges. So very similar to how you would wrap a car. Um, but we'll see how that goes. So now I've stuck it down as best as I could. Um, I've got a, it's like a wrapping tool, little plastic squeegee tool. And I'll just go around and push all the fabric into the corners. So when I'm doing this, rather than going across like this, I'm trying to follow the direction of the curve. Um, and I'm trying to justify why I'm doing this in my head, but essentially it's stopping you from stretching the fabric 
and grouping it up in the edges, in the corners. So if I just essentially just push down, move the squeegee along, get it into the corners like this. Then I can use the edge of it just to push. I hope you can see this. It's quite difficult to film. Um, but essentially just push it into these corner edges like this. And then we may get some creasing on these parts, but not on the final piece. So the next step now, all this is glued in, is to get Mr. Stanley. It's been used quite a lot recently, actually, so thanks, Stanley. Uh, and just cut around the edges, just try and be really gentle um, and cut through this top layer of fabric. If you are going to do this, just make sure that you get a Stanley blade that's got a really sharp edge on. So you don't have to apply much pressure and it'll just cut straight through. So this is the end product. Looks pretty spot on. I mean, you can see a bit of glue around there. I might be able to get that off, but they feel way better. And they've not really got a texture underneath as well, which is really nice. I thought they would have had like bubbles or anything like that, but seem to be looking really good. I don't know if I showed you, but I managed to put the um, exhaust shields on again. So I'll show you that now. So this is what the engine bay looks like. Pretty good. We've got active crocs on again, but it's looking pretty nice. Just going to check the oil on the car and just make sure that it doesn't look like it's leaked. It's been sat for a week. I started it up yesterday, it starts up fine. Uh, it doesn't look like it's dripped on the floor, so I'm just going to check that the oil level's okay and uh, top it up if it needs it. I've just got a bit of kitchen roll, pull out the dipstick, I wipe the oil off and then stick it back in. Just see it, it's probably about, oh, camera, there we go. It's probably about three quarters of the way up, so it's spot on. Another really good thing, if we have a look, just where my finger is, that's where the rocker cover gasket is, and that was actually just covered in oil before. You can see there's no no oil residue or anything around there, um, so it's looking really good. Also, one thing that I like to check is if I just take the ignition uh, leads off just check that there's no oil in there and in the spark plug holes as well um, and that just makes sure that the rocker cover is sealing as it should be i do need to change the bolts on these because they're not matching and also we're missing one in that corner uh, i'd quite like to have these all matching up so i'll change them at some point it's a new day and the door cards are finished uh, as i showed you a bit earlier the uh, I've cut them all out. There's a little bit of glue left, but they're looking so much better. I'm just working on some anti-vibration stuff. Spin this over. Just picked up some like, anti-vibration wash washers, I think they're called. Just like little foam washers. Um, I'm just going around, sticking them on where they come into contact with the door panel. And I've also got some felt strips as well that I've started sticking on. You see there? Um, so I've put this on both sides of this little wooden piece. And it just means that uh, when I've got the speakers on and also when I'm driving it on you know, like motorways and stuff, uh, there'll be a little bit less noise in the cabin, a bit less rattly, uh, and it should sound a lot better. Onto the bolts. As I mentioned earlier, the bolts are all just mismatched and all over the place. So I've bought some new bolts and I'm going to give them a spray. Uh, I'll just spin the camera and show you. So I've got some posi drive ones for, they're a bit longer, these posi drive ones. Uh, they're for the visible areas on the car. And then I've bought these other ones for uh, some hidden spots. So I'm going to just put a coat of black paint on them. Uh, I don't know why I'm going to this extent, but I want it to look nice. And we've not got active crocs, we've got active slippers, if you know, you know. As I mentioned in a previous video, I've done quite a lot of spray painting before. So I've just got loads of cans just lying around. They're probably all out of date, but I've just tried this one and it doesn't seem to cover very well. It's probably past its sell-by date. But this one seems to do all right. I did want to put the door cards on today. Um, it's pitch black outside, but I've not got much time to do it. So it, it might be that I have to do it in the dark. I don't know if I showed you this, but I bought a drive shaft. Uh, the boots haven't torn yet, um, but it means that the joints in there should be okay. So we can just swap the boots out uh, and get that put on the car. 
looks in all right condition. It looks better than the one that's already on there. So strangely enough, I'd ordered some interior parts. It was the gear stick boot and I think there was something else. I can't remember what it was. I sent this guy 20 quid on Facebook and I was talking to him about if he had a drive shaft spare and he actually just ended up sending me this drive shaft um, but didn't send me the other stuff that I'd actually ordered. So um, I sent him the money anyway. It was 65 quid, but yeah, it was a bit of a strange parcel that turned up. I was quite surprised. I've just realised that I did want to paint these as well. That's a bit annoying. These are for the intake manifold cover thing. I can't remember what it's called. Um, I'm going to paint these. Gonna paint these ones with the high temperature paint because they for the engine bay. These ones are for the manifold cover thing. So are these two, they were, weren't matching. One was a 12 mil, one was a 13 for some reason. And these are for the exhaust manifold cover. They're a bit rusty, but I'm gonna reuse them because they've got this flange on. So this is the interior. I'll just zoom out so you can see it. We've got the door cards on this side as well looking pretty spot on and we've got the little lights wired in as well they're looking pretty cool seems to shut a lot better and also it doesn't seem to rattle as well when we've got the speakers on well not as much anyway so pretty happy with how they've turned out and on that note we'll close out for today and hope to catch you all in the next episode